Thanks to the witness testimonies of Mr. Blacksad and Miss Dunn, your future is not looking too good. Go to hell, you dog. If I choked you with a pillow, nobody would know. You should already be dead. Blacksad, stay out of this. Remember who's the cop here. Maybe we can offer you a deal. We know someone hired you to kill Joe Dunn and Clarice Freeman. What do you have to say? I'll call your bluff. You ain't got nothing. You know, I'm really good at planting false evidence. Shut up, or I'll kick you out. If you tell us who hired you, we'll help you. What can you offer me? We could significantly reduce your sentence. I could testify that you helped me on the rooftop. You're pathetic. Is that why you never got in the police force, Black said? Did you fail the good cop, bad cop test? I won't say a word. And believe me, you stand to lose. Care for a piece of advice? If I were you, I'd fear for my life. I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out! I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out! Luckily, Smirnov's wound wasn't as bad as Randall's. Unfortunately, the police found nothing on the nearby rooftops. Our best shot at finding the killer was gone, so I went back to my previous lead. It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates, so my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing. Hello, Smirnoff residence. You're dead! No, I got you with my lasso! Can you quiet down, kids? Dunn got killed for stirring the hornet's nest. And you confessed your crime! Kids, please. He'd been investigating athletes for months, including Helen Moore and Al Stone, among others. Mm -hmm. Dunn's notes aren't all that clear, and I'm not sure what he was after. Mm -hmm. But I'd say we're facing a widespread corruption case. Well, if you're right some dangerous evidence. Bring it here ASAP. 
sure, but there's something important that I need to finish first. I wanted to follow a certain lead on my own before Smirnov had the chance to see anything. According to his notebook, Dunn had seen Craig Spano at Sam's Diner just four days before his death. Get out of here, pussy! I have some questions for you. Oh, well, maybe I don't have answers for a pussy. It might have been easier to slap the information out of him, but I decided to trust in a universal truth. Everyone is guilty of something. You don't know who I am, right? Don't know and don't care. Come on, spit it out. I'm John H. Blackmore, public health inspector. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> there are some real freaks around here, so I have to be firm, you know? Have you eaten? Dinner's on the house. After you answer my questions. Sure, go ahead. Your call. Always at your disposal, Inspector. Ask away. Fear turned him soft and made him talk. Sure enough. Dunn had been there a few days back with a chimpanzee who matched Spano's description. Apparently, the guy still lived with his father. Dunn said he couldn't stay there a day more. For the time being, he would move into his place. Wait a minute! What does public health services have to do with that chimp? We worked together at the Consumer Protection Office. He came in pretending to be a client, and you insulted him. Me? Well, I barely even talked to him. Which is even worse. <laughs> Dunn had taken Spano to his place. I wanted to believe that... When Randall Lee broke into the apartment, Spano fled to his former address. But where could that be? If the living have rich and poor neighborhoods, so do the dead. In the mid-19th century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished citizens. Thinkers, scientists, writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers. Here lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Now you know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple.
the four bases guarding their father. According to the book I found at Dunn's place, fans of the sport leave baseballs on Bradwick's tomb to pay their respects. It'd be even better with a skull between the bats. Still hot. If this had been here over 30 minutes, it'd be covered in ants.
Mitchell, who fought with Dunn during the war, tried to pass as Yale's doctor. I've never trusted angels. When they fall, they turn into demons.
I found a baseball glove at Joe Dunn's place. A glove signed by a great star. I couldn't believe my luck. I've always been a New York Warriors fan. Although, to be honest, they're not what they used to be. Yep, they just haven't been the same without Craig Spano. Joe Dunn met with someone at the diner, close to his gym. Then he took that person to his house, so that he didn't have to live at the cemetery. I would have never guessed the person's identity. Are you? I'm FBI agent John H. Blackmore. How's Joe? One question at a time. It's my turn. Your turn. Why are you hiding here? Because I, I fear for my life. Because it, this is the only place where I've, I feel safe. Because Joe took me to his home. But they went looking for me there too. What did he want from you? And who wants to kill you? One question at a time. How's Joe? What would happen if I told him the truth? Would he lose it? Could I take that chance? Joe Dunn is dead. Murdered. I told you, Joe! How did it happen? One question at a time. My turn. What was your glove doing at Dunn's place? Because that's how it happened. I forgot the damn glove when I fled the house, running from the guy who came after me. A guy hired by the man who ruined my life, and so many others. A guy hired by the very same man that Joe is hiding from. Our old friend, the surgeon. Mitchell the surgeon? Is he the person behind all of this? That surgeon you mentioned, is he... My turn. I want to know why I should trust you.
because I could have killed you by now, but I haven't. It's my turn. That surgeon that you mentioned, is he in this photo I got here? Ow! Hey! Ah. Hey, that toss was... Both my ear and my self-esteem would hurt for days. But at least I had a new lead to follow. The surgeon. The bastard had avoided my scrutiny by passing as a hospital doctor. But now, all of my senses were on guard. No matter how good the disguise, or how well he hid, I would find him. So, what you're saying is, one, there's a corruption scandal involving all kinds of athletes. Two, our puppet master is a surgeon named Mitchell, a man who happened to fight in the war with Dunn, right? Every lead I've found points to him. Anyway, where was I? Number three, right? Three. Since Dunn was on his trail, Mitchell hired an anteater to get rid of him. Then, since you were also shaking the wasp's nest, he went after you. But the anteater made a mistake, and Mitchell killed him to cover his own tracks. And, wait, four. The key to all this lies with a common friend of Dunn's and Mitchell's, Craig Spenow. Do you really trust him? You should know that I don't trust anyone. Except for your friend Weekly, that is. Four. No, I mean, five. Dunn was murdered five, I mean, four days after taking Spenno to his house. If that doesn't make him suspect, makes sense, doesn't it? No, nah, it doesn't add up. Why not? Just a hunch. Let's follow up with the suspects. You told Smirnoff you're convinced that Yale is innocent. But what about O'Leary? Um, six. O'Leary wouldn't have sent Randall to kill Dunn. 
He would have dragged him to his basement, given him his little speech, and then killed him himself. Nah. I know O'Leary, and he wouldn't have sent a hitman. He would have taken matters into his own hands. What about Cassidy? Seven, right? I think it's safe to rule out Cassidy as Dunn's murderer. He seems too impulsive to have planned such a twisted crime. Whoever planned the whole thing knew the suicide theory would fall through, so he manipulated the clues to incriminate Yale. Cassidy is too impulsive to pull off such an intricate plan. So, you're right. Mitchell is the one pulling the strings. And you know why? Because, in novels, the murderer is always someone the detective knows from the beginning. Well, that could be the case in British novels. You know, where everyone in the mansion where the murder took place is a suspect. But this might just be an American whodunit, where the detective doesn't even meet the culprit until the last scene. You mean we still don't know who's pulling the strings? I didn't say that. How did it go with Helen Moore? Ah, uh, I didn't get anything. Even though it started out really well, I asked to interview her along with her boyfriend, Al Stone. Since I'm a big shot, they were happy to oblige. Perfect. Now, time for the interview. I'll go back and forth so you don't get bored. So, who goes first? Here's one for Helen. Dating a boxer can be dangerous. Aren't you afraid that those blows to the head will take a toll on his intellectual capacity? Honey, take a look at my man and then look at yourself. You really think I'm with him because of his intellectual capacity? Helen! Write this down. Nothing will change my man. His smarts, manliness, and integrity are all boxing proof. Okay, now... Here's a question for Al. In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Uh, yeah, sure. My Al is going to kick that thug's behind. Isn't that so, honey? Yeah, well, we'll see. No such thing as a weak rival. Nonsense. You are and will be world champion. Next question. Moving on. Here's one for both of you. How did you meet? At the party organized by Des- Ow! Who threw the party doesn't matter one bit. What matters is that I saw you and you saw me. Our paths crossed and our lives were changed forever. Now what? Time for a picture. How should we pose? Show me your weapons. Uh, the fist against the racket. That's it. Perfect. Okay, one more question, and... Oh, Al, honey, can you answer it? I've got to go say hi to a fan. <laughs> oh, 
I'll be right back, Mr. Pulitzer. <laughs> Wait. You mean she stopped smiling when that fan showed up? Uh, yeah. Could you describe him for me? I'll be able to show you something as soon as I'm done developing these pictures. And actually, I thought it was odd, too. So while I continued to interview Stone, I managed to take some pictures of Moore and whoever her mysterious fan was. All right, so uh, where were we? Are you ever jealous about sharing your sweetheart with America? Well, uh, I wouldn't say I'm jealous, but I know that someone so popular and honest can draw the wrong kind of attention. There are plenty of people who would love to put an end to our career, so it's not easy. Your manager is Frank Cassidy, president of the Boxing Managers Association of New York. According to him, only boxers working with member managers should be allowed to compete. What do you think about that? Cassidy is a great manager, really. No complaints there. And the work he's putting in as president of the association is really valuable. But, I don't know, maybe in this case, Joe Dunn was right. Wait, no. Could you keep that last comment uh, off the record? You know, on the down low. My lips are sealed. In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Well, supposedly the odds are in my favor, but there is no such thing as a weak rival. And, you know, Bobby Yale might be young and going through a rough patch, but he's had a, an amazing streak, so I'll do my best. Let's get that picture taken. Let's see what you think about this. Close your eyes and rest your chin on your fist. The boxing thinker. Like these? Exactly. Wait, I, I accidentally moved. Stand still. I'll take another one. All right. So, uh, where were we? Are you ever jealous about sharing your sweetheart with America? Well, uh, I wouldn't say I'm jealous, but I know that someone so popular and honest can draw the wrong kind of attention. There are plenty of people who would love to put an end to our career, so it's not easy. Let's get that picture taken. Let's see what you think about this. Close your eyes and rest your chin on your fist. The boxing thinker. Like these? Exactly. Wait, I, I accidentally moved. Stand still. I'll take another one. What's with me today? Don't move, please. Now we got it. Should we keep at it? In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Well, supposedly the odds are in my favor, but there is no such thing as a weak rival. And, you know, Bobby Yale might be young and going through a rough patch, but he's had a, an amazing streak, so I'll do my best. I'm going to take one more, all right? Turn around and show me those biceps from behind. Like that? That's it. What's up with me? Stand still. I'll take it again. I can't seem to get it right. Don't move. 
It's about time. Finally, we're all set. Wait. So, are you telling me the photos are developed? Or is that what you said to Stone? <laughs> Both. Just look. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. How much do you think each bicep weighs? A lot. But less than your tongue. <laughs> You're hilarious. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse? Or putting it in? Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse? Or putting it in? The boxing thinker, the boxing poet. Boxing just might turn out to be the intellectual sport of choice. The boxing thinker, the boxing poet. Boxing just might turn out to be the intellectual sport of choice. I think she only smokes when she's nervous. What was making her nervous? I think she only smokes when she's nervous. What was making her nervous? The boxing thinker, the boxing poet. Boxing just might turn out to be the intellectual sport of choice. How the hell did you make them pose like that? They're lovers, not sworn enemies. I don't know. I was focused on my detective skills. How the hell did you make them pose like that? They're lovers, not sworn enemies. I don't know. I was focused on my detective skills. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. How much do you think each bicep weighs? A lot, but less than your tongue. <laughs> You're hilarious. Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse or putting it in? Hmm. I've seen that matchbox before. Wait, that's him. Who? Mitchell, the surgeon. Seriously? <laughs> we got him. Not yet. Right. We still have to find him. Mm. Hey, pal. Did you hear what I just said? We need to keep looking at all those pictures. We need a clue that'll take us to Mitchell. Hey, see? There. Just like I was saying. Brawls aren't even the worst part of my job. Sure, you may take a beating, but at least you get the chance to defend yourself. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. People were finally leaving the place. 
The bar was about to close. And I hadn't seen Mitchell go in or out. I had no choice. I see you took me up on my invitation. And you're smart. You knew not to come until my anti-fur regulars had all cleared out. I can't say no to good advice. Or good bourbon. Here's looking at you, Mr... Uh, what was your name? As far as I knew, La Iguana always stayed neutral. He played poker with Cassidy. But his joint was used as a gambling drop-off for O'Leary's operation. Did it make sense to keep faking it? Or was it too dangerous not to? Farnham. Howard M. Farnham II. That's right. Howard Farnham from Ding Dong, Texas. You're natural. That sure beats your poker game. Ah, uh, this here's much easier. No cheating. Ha <laughs> You barely flinched when Cassidy decided to teach that ego a lesson. What do you want a fella to say? Between you and me, partner, this ain't my first showdown. <laughs> we all got our own lethal barber. <laughs> Tell me, what do you really want with Cassidy? I can't say it's clear. Damn it. Well, nobody's perfect. I'm looking to start a boxing manager's association in Texas. I could really use Cassidy's know-how. Don't worry about it. I was only curious. So, what about me? What do you want from me? No one comes to La Iguana just to drink and play pool. I'm here looking for a regular of yours. Dr. Angus Mitchell. What for? We fought together during the war. I just wanted to say hi. Sure. Tell you what, I'll talk to Mitchell. Come back tomorrow night. You don't understand. I have to talk to him, or else. Or else what? I don't think Cassidy would be too happy about the role this here dump plays in old Leary's gambling operation. You follow me? Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Give me your phone number, and I'll give you a call when Mitchell shows up. No. You're going to call him right now, and you're going to give him this message. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. It's so bad that your thoughts spiral in a never-ending loop. Like when you're stuck in your car, on surveillance duty. The owner of La Iguana was supposed to tell Mitchell that a certain anteater was still alive. And that it was only a matter of time before he ratted him out with a bit of luck that would make him nervous enough to force his hand. Now all I had to do was follow him.
We'll be just fine, don't worry. Gil, stand guard right here. If the cat shows up, you know what to do. I'll be back in an hour. Could I take him by surprise from over there? Although I don't know how I'd get there.
When you want to be silent, noise can be your best ally. Hey, you're one feisty cat. Smells like liberty and oil spills.
We'll be just fine, don't worry. Gil, stand guard right here. If the cat shows up, you know what to do. I'll be back in an hour. Could I take him by surprise from over there? Although I don't know how I'd get there.
Okay. I did mess up a guy's face with an extinguisher once, but this kind is too heavy for my current needs. Hmm, what does this place have to hide?
Will I need help? Who would I call? Smirnoff. Pier 36. Meet me in an hour. Black Sad? If you're coming from Montgomery, it's the 6th sea-facing warehouse. What's going on? And bring the cavalry. According to this, the warehouse belonged to a Canadian import company. It could be an Ojibwa totem pole, in which case, the top animal would be a crane. If I'm not mistaken, these are incense sticks, used in cleansing rituals. A 
a dream catcher. It's supposed to protect children during the night, trapping all evil in its spider web. Don't you even think of screaming. I might not even talk. It looks like an arrowhead. Everything seems to prove that Gil is a Native American, and I'm almost sure that the woman in the picture is his mother. You know who'll always believe in you? Your mother. My mother never lost her faith in me. And I gave her plenty of reasons when I was a kid. It all started with something as stupid as keeping the change when she sent me for groceries. Then I started stealing fruit from the street stands. And finally, I turned to pickpocketing. Somehow, my mother managed to keep me in school until I got into college. But I never gave her reasons to believe in me then either. My parents gave me a monthly allowance, which I spent mainly on poker games and the like. So after a year of college, I quit. Then Pearl Harbor happened. I got drafted and sent to Europe. I never knew how to follow orders. They sent me back home with a dishonorable discharge. But when I got back, I was treated like a pariah, a veteran outcast who never should have come back in the first place. And yet, my mother never ceased to... I also fought in the war. That's where I met Mitchell. They used me, like many of my people. And then they just tossed us aside. The first time Mitchell offered me to do this, I told him to take a hike. I wanted to get my act together. But I ended up begging him. I don't like Mitchell. I don't like the things he makes me do. I don't like that German rat either. But what I like least of all is myself. I don't like what I did during the war, and I don't like what I'm doing now. Do you know what it's like to kill a friend for the sake of the mission? Huh. But my mother, she always thought I'd make amends and start anew. Maybe it's time I did just that. It's number three.